launched 2005, the EU emissions trading system is designed to help member states achieve their commitments to reduce greenhouse gas emissions by 20% by 2020, allowing participating organisations and states to buy and sell emissions allowances as they need. But the recent lull in manufacturing and therefore demand for power in the wake of the global financial crisis has created a false reduction in emissions since 2008 that can only rise as the economy restarts. And this has driven down the price of carbon traded on the open market as credits remain unused. Now approaching its third phase, what impact has the ETS had in Europe to date? And if a strong carbon price is a key driver in reducing carbon emissions in the EU, how and even should we strive to keep the ETS buoyant in the face of free market challenges? I think the EU ETS is the one policy that has actually changed the climate change debate in Europe. It covers about 50% of emissions across Europe. So the strengths are that it's a market-based system and it will, if operated well, produce the lowest cost for any given reduction target. Well, I, I do think the strength is that we've shown it is possible to collect the necessary data, uh, to monitor the way in which emissions are taking place, and that you can have a system which does involve international trading. The weakness of it is at the moment that the recession has reset the agenda. The cap is in effect too high. It's, it's bad luck really, you know, the phase two was genuinely an improvement on phase one, but unfortunately it, the limits in phase two were set before we knew how bad the recession was going to be. The weaknesses, I would say, are mostly on the regulatory side. We have set, seen some instances of fraud, for example, we've seen instances of regulatory weakness, we've seen instances of theft. Of course I'm worried that there's been some fraud in the way in which these allowances have been reported. That's something which the EU has to look at very carefully to eliminate. I think the failure really has been this uh, collapse of the carbon price. The cap has been too lenient, which meant that, that firms could meet the cap by just changing operationally what they're doing. They were not forced to change their investment positions. When we get into phase three, we'll have tighter limits, and I believe in the next four or five years, we will really see this system starting to have an effect. The current ETS system needs some uh, urgent reform, we would suggest. There's definitely a need under the ETS to make sure that um, it is in the longer term aligned with other policy instruments such as energy efficiency. This could be done through a set aside of emission allowances, but the important thing is that, that, is that, is that we aim for a permanent fix and not for a temporary fix. I would like the set aside to occur and there to be a robust carbon price as a result of that and there to be a clear signal that there will be a carbon floor price beyond 2020. I think it would be particularly successful if it does that in promoting things like CO2 capture and storage, which I think are particularly cost-effective means. I think it's a good thing to extend the EU ETS, but it can only be extended into sectors where we have sophisticated industries like aviation. It will be very interesting to see when aviation comes into the EU system starting next year, whether that means an acceleration of the replacement of the older, less efficient aircraft. I'd love to see emissions trading introduced into shipping. Shipping is one of the most polluting industries in the world. Is it the model for the rest of the world? I think it is in the sense that we have seen that emissions trading uh, can work, can bring emissions down, can do so cheaply. Market mechanisms of this kind would be a powerful agent in a global context. There are very exciting activities going on in California and that the Chinese are about to experiment with a cap and trade system which will be closely modelled on the European experience. What I'd like to think is that the example of the EU system in the next 10 years will persuade other countries to join in. I think this could become one of the most important policies in, in terms of the world's response to climate change. The ETS is a hugely important step forward in managing the future trajectory of emissions, and the world is looking towards it as a model. But without reform, can it realise its potential? Join the debate and have your say on the future of the European Emissions Trading System at commentvisions.com.